In this video, we're going to take a look at position versus time and velocity versus time graphs. So I've already drawn two graphs here on the screen, a position versus time or displacement versus time, if you like, and a velocity versus time graph. Now, the, the two graphs have the same shape and each of them has two um, regions. So the question we want to ask ourselves here is when is the net force zero? So I'll just write that out. When is the net force zero on whatever object this might be. So the, these two graphs uh, trace the position versus time, displacement versus time, and velocity versus time of an object. And in those four regions, when is the net force going to be zero? Or can, you know, can we extract that information from the graphs? So if we look first of all at region A, so let's pop, uh, let's go with red here. So in region A, what's happening? Well, it's a, it's a displacement versus time graph. The displacement is increasing linearly with time. So the, the slope of a displacement versus time graph gives us the velocity. We can see that that slope is constant in time, so it's just a single constant slope, which tells us that the velocity is constant in region A. So velocity is constant is the first thing we can write down based on that analysis. So if the velocity is constant in that region A, if the velocity is constant, that must tell us that then that the acceleration is equal to zero. So the acceleration equals zero. So if the acceleration equals zero, that must mean by Newton's second law that there's no net force acting on the object. So therefore, we can write down that the net force equals zero as well. So the velocity is constant, therefore the acceleration is zero, therefore the net force acting on the object is zero. Fine. What about part B then? So in part B, the displacement is constant. So the object is at a particular point in space and that location in space is not changing. So what that tells us then is that if the if the lo location or if the displacement isn't changing, the object must be stationary, which means that the velocity is zero. Uh, so the velocity is zero, we've said already. If the object isn't moving, then its velocity also isn't changing. So the velocity of, uh, across this region B here is zero. So the velocity is not changing. So that tells us that the acceleration has to be zero. Again, if the, if the, uh, if the velocity isn't changing at all, then the velocity is zero. And then again, the same thing applies here where the net force equals zero. So let's write that in. Okay, so what about for region C now? So let's look at what's happening in C. So we'll take a look at it and we see that we're looking, okay, we're looking at a velocity versus time graph here. And if we just look at the individual points here, what we see is that each, like if this is T1, this is T2, this is T3, and then this is V1, V2, V3. We know that V3 is greater than V2, is greater than V1, which means the velocity is increasing as a function of time. So if the velocity is changing as a function of time, that means that we have an acceleration. So we can say that V, whoops, V is increasing in region C. So V is increasing, which tells us then that the acceleration has to be greater than zero. Acceleration is greater than zero, which tells us that there net force has to be greater than zero too. So we have a net force acting on this object when in region C here. So because the velocity is increasing, the velocity is changing, a change in velocity is caused by an acceleration and an acceleration is caused by a net force. So we've identified now a region where there is a net force and that's region C. So let's move on to the last region then. So in region D, the curve is flat again, or the graph is flat again. So this is a velocity versus time graph. So what does that tell us? If the velocity versus time graph is um, a straight line, or, you know, with zero slope, I suppose you could say, like we have here. So if the slope of a velocity versus time graph is zero, that means that the velocity is constant in this region. So the velocity is constant as a function of time. What do we know about the acceleration if the velocity is constant we know that for constant velocity the acceleration is equal to zero again so constant velocity means no acceleration so the acceleration is zero and again that leads us on to conclude that the net force 
is also equal to zero. So when we look back at the four regions, we see that only region C, so only this region here, has an acceleration associated, which means that there's a net force on the object at that particular point in time. And for this to be the case, what we see is, or what we need to be the case, is that the velocity versus time graph has to have a non-zero slope. So in region C, it has a non-zero slope, which means that there's an acceleration, which means that there's a force. In region D, it has a zero slope, which means the acceleration is not changing, which means there's no net force. Now, on the left-hand side, on the position versus time graph, we, we can come to the same conclusions. In region A, we have a, a, a change in displacement with time, which gives us a velocity. But because of the slope in this region A here is constant for the entire time interval of, of region A, we know that the velocity then must be constant. So an extra sort of bonus question, I suppose, to ask yourself um, as you're studying these position versus time and velocity versus time graphs is, how would we know when there was a net force on the object from a, a, an x versus t or a displacement versus time graph. So maybe that's something you can go and um, research yourself. I won't give you the answer um, straight away here. Go and try and think about what would an acceleration look like on an x versus t graph.